You're listening to the Ball Talk Podcast with me, Ryan Bailey. This podcast is brought to you by Adapt Athletic Performance and Therapy. Head over to Instagram and give them a follow at adapt underscore clinic. If you enjoyed this podcast, don't forget to leave a like, share it with your friends and hit that subscribe or follow button as well. Without further ado, let's get straight into the podcast. Folks, you're all very welcome to episode number 49 of the Ball Talk podcast. And today I am joined by Mickey Burke from Longwood and County Meath. Mickey, how are you getting on? Brian, how's things? Uh, nice to talk to you, lad. Hope you're keeping well. All good now, all good. Thank God. Look, at Mickey, before we get into any sports-related questions, there's a question that I'm kind of forgetting to ask some people on the podcast, but I'm getting around to as much as I can, and it's thrown up some good answers so far anyways. But the first question for you is, you've got a dream concert. Are you a music man, are you? Do you like your music? I don't know whether to lie here or not. I love my music, uh, but I've never been to a concert in my life. No, is that, that after flabbergasting you a bit? No, that, that only adds to the question. I, I've never been to one myself, unless you count Mike Denver as a concert now. I've never been to one myself. But um, I have a question here for you, and it's thrown up some good answers in the past. You've got a dream concert. Now, it's one day. It can be in any venue you want it to be, whether it be Marley Park, Slane Castle, wherever you like. And you've got three acts, one after the other. Now, they can be dead or alive. They're your, your dream, Mickey Burke's dream concert, one after the other. Now, we've had a few thrown up. My, my personal one would be Fleetwood Mac, uh, Oasis, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Now, there's a few that have thrown in some curveballs. Raf Gertaro said the Spice Girls, Emily Mulligan threw Phil Collins into the mix. So there's a few different, there's a bit of variety there. So I know I'm putting you on the spot a small bit, but who would you reckon would be in the three? Hmm. Uh, not easy. Um, Christy Moore, um, the Wolf Tones, and Jesus, I don't know, someone from years and years ago, Elvis or uh, someone like that, maybe for the crack to see what if I could go back in time, it would be interesting to see what something like that would be like the clothes yeah. and everything as well. Um, Maybe someone like that. I don't know, but uh, Christy Moore, anyway, I, no, I've never been to him. Uh, Dwarf Tones, I listen to all their kind of music. Um, ACDC, maybe. ACDC, yeah. I, I, listen, I listen to a good bit of their music. Uh, Highway to Hell and Hell's Bells and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I'd be, I, I'm, I've never been to a concert. It's mad, <laughs> I know. If, sport kind of always got in the way, and I always kind of missed Electric Picnic or Anathan and Crow Park or that kind of thing. So... I catch up on them. I have enough time to catch up on them now in, in future years. Yeah, that's just it. We're, saying, we're only saying that ourselves here in the house a few weeks ago that with the lockdown and the virus and everything, everyone's just mad to get out to a concert and do things that they hadn't done before and, and they regret not doing. But you were saying there about Christy Moore and the Wolf Tones and, and it's actually the next the next thing I wanted to ask you about was the family pub. So you, you, your family run a pub in, in Longwood, is that right? That's right, yeah. Family run pub in the village here in the middle of the village, yeah. So that... I'm thinking that the likes of Christy Moore, the Wolf Tones, a lot of that might be played on, on the jukebox in the background, would it? Oh, jeez, it would be, yeah. The old jukebox to be, to be, you wouldn't know what kind of tunes now lads would be putting in here, uh, be asking for, but um, yeah, they're definitely up near the top, all right. Um, yeah, the pub is the pub is a family run pub here. Here, my father, my father came to the village in about 1964 came as a young man and uh, my mother is originally from Longwood so um I grew up above the pub here and that's where I am now at the moment the, fam- the family home is above the pub so um I grew up in kind of the pub game all my life and a farm out the back so uh, typical kind of childhood that you would think from a lad in the country um you know pub and then backyard and then farm out the back with a few sheep and cattle that was kind of my upbringing I had a great upbringing as a young fella in Longwood small village mm. And coming into the pub atmosphere and, and like you come across it on, on social media as an outgoing fella that you, you know you enjoy the crack and you love to have a laugh and stuff like that. And growing up in the in a pub surely added to that and, and brought that character out in you. Probably did, Rian, yeah, but it took time. Um <clears throat> in many ways I am shy. Uh, no people won't believe that, but um I suppose sport kind of 
brought the shyness out of me. Um, growing up in the pub, like dad would have always kind of, you know, wanted me downstairs and washing glasses and in behind the counter and pulling a pint here or there. And that can be quite intimidating for a young fella who doesn't, who didn't drink and who didn't know the crack with lads, maybe it would a hangover or buys on the beer for a couple of days having to laugh. It can be an intimidating enough pace and, um, you know, boys cracking dro- jokes and you don't really get it. So I wasn't, definitely was not comfortable at the start and it took me a while to, I had big boots to fill with my father because he was a big, a huge, big popular character and everyone, someone would ask you, where are you from? And you'd say, along with the first thing they'd say, oh, Stony Burke. You know, Stony Burke's in there, that's my dad, you know, that's his nickname, Stony. So uh, big boots to fill and um, it took, it was character building stuff, definitely, yeah. So, uh, so as you said there, growing up in the pub and from a very, obviously from a very young age, you know, you'd be called in to do a bit of work on the night and stuff like that. Did you find that had a bit of effect in terms of, you know, your, your younger years of playing football and even your older years as well um, and, and playing hurling as well? And, you know, you could be working until two or three in the morning and having to get up for a game and up at nine o'clock and stuff like that. Yeah, but I suppose when you're younger, like you're able to do it and, you, you know, you don't pass any remarks on that. Um, I wouldn't have got much sympathy either off my parents or that that type of thing in a way. Like you know, it was my mother and father were brilliant. Like you know, d- like dad was class act. Um, and mom was my school teacher. Blow and the you know she taught me baby infants and 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 high infants. She did her whole stint in Longwood in the primary school. So, um, but like working late as a young fella. You, you were grand like you weren't you weren't pampered you got up and you did it obviously when I got a bit older and that I got got a bit cuter and avoided those late nights arena at any at any chance I could to give myself the best yeah. chance of playing well and you enjoyed the I'm sure you enjoyed the pub atmosphere as well working in it and like I know myself from doing bear work as well there's nothing better when it's the, it's a busy night and you're you're on a roll like at the places flying ah Jesus great it's great and thank God you know we don't get much trouble really as such um we we have great great crack in the pub down here. So yeah, it's something I enjoy doing. I enjoy mingling with people. I enjoy talking to people now. I've you know more like I said probably a little bit more confidence in talking to people and come out of my shell from from the earlier years when you're when you're a shy young teenager. So um, yeah, I I I, I love the pub game. I, I probably didn't at the start when I was young. I didn't envisage 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 myself uh, being the the publican, but. Um, Everything happens for a reason, doesn't it? And you know, yeah, you have to, you have to help out in, in the heat of the real to your family. Such, um, we we have great great crack in the pub down here. So, yeah, it's something I enjoy doing. I enjoy mingling with people. I enjoy talking to people. Now I've you know more, like I said, probably a little bit more confidence in talking to people and come out of my shell from from the earlier years when you're when you're a shy young teenager. So, um. Yeah, I, 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 I love the pub game. I, I probably didn't, at the start, when I was young, I didn't envisage, envisage, envisage myself uh, being the, the publican, but um, everything happens for a reason, doesn't it? And, you know, yeah, you, have to, you have to help out in, in the heat of the real to your family. Exactly, yeah. I only saw, uh, only saw yesterday, actually, the video, the, the lad from Dublin, I can't think of his name now, he's the Guinness guru. He came round to you. Was it was that last year? Towards the end of last year, was it the start of start of twenty twenty? Whatever he came round. He's he's a mead man now, so you better be careful with that. Did I say he's that? a mead man. He, he he's 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 from Ashburn, so you could get in trouble there now for for that. Yeah, no, no, he's a nice guy. I know his brother Sean Kern is um is his brother, and Sean Z would have played in the mead football team with me. So no, them boys are right up on the Dublin border, so it is easy easy to make that uh, mistake. But yeah, the Guinness Guru come down and visit it. All right. Had a chat. Good stuff, good stuff. So look back on looking back on 2020. So as we've touched on, we ha- uh, you've got the family pub and you're playing football and hurling as well. And all of a shot, all three of them basically just are stopped. How did you find them a few months? Because look, it hit, it hit everybody hard. But like, how did you find them a few months for yourself? Yeah, um, I suppose... The thing I missed was kind of going out for a meal or going out for, you know, meeting the boys for a, a coffee there in the mornings or something like that. Um, actually sitting down and just having a chat. Um, initially, I suppose there was kind of a period at the very, very start where it was kind of cool for a week or so there. You were kind of no one could go out and you're on your own and you had to stay 
uh, with your close family, but then that wore off, you know, um, and everyone kind of wanted to get back into routine again. But I just tried to keep busy. We've a, we, we've a few animals here and did a bit of farming. Um, obviously, the pub was shut completely, uh, which is hugely disappointing. But I kept up my training. I have a bit of a gym out the back, and I kept up the running and that ringing to try and keep my fitness up. So. That wouldn't have changed too much. I would always been a, a fecker to train, like anyway. So the lockdown wasn't going to stop me. Um, but I suppose just that that may maybe social interaction with your friends or with with other people. Um, you might have seen them for a while. So uh, we met for this distance kind of coffees and that 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 type of thing to 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 have a chat. But now look at it. We had to adapt, didn't we, and get through yeah. it. All, each and every one of us. Yeah, and unfortunately, it's not over yet. Did you try and did you did you get a chance to open the pub back up for for any while over the Christmas or around was it September, late September time as well? Yeah, we did, lad. We we opened about only for about two or three weeks, uh, maybe two weeks. Um, so we closed obviously at the start there in March. Jez, it's hard to believe it's a year now already, almost coming up. Um, you know, we were closed, and look, I could I could rant away to you here about the pubs. Um, I you know I feel like we got a really raw deal. Um, not not at this particular time because you know this new strain of the virus is obviously rampant. So no complaints there. But in the earlier part, I felt the publicans, uh, you know, the, the the wet pubs as we were known as, definitely bore the brunt of of kind of uh, of it and got got a very very raw deal. Um, we we put a bit of time and effort into putting snugs in at home here and putting dividers in and. Uh, putting contactless hand sanitizers and and you know adhering to all the rules and um you know i understand it was a difficult time for everyone and decisions weren't easily made but to be to be able to say just to have a, a bowl of soup and a sandwich and a pint and then go 100 yards down the road and just have a pint wasn't allowed was bizarre you know it did not make any sense it still doesn't yeah. make sense so mm. anyway um that's the way it is and look we'll we'll, we'll get up and go on with it yeah, that's just it. Sure, we, we can't. I know we can't fix any of the problems here, but sure, it's good to chat about them all the same and saying that too. Absolutely. So, so getting back into um, into the club championship then this year. So were, were you playing both hurling football for the club this year as well? Yeah, uh, playing senior. We're senior hurling here, and we're um, intermediate football. So um, we have the same group of guys playing both. Three and really, we only like have two footballers. Uh, only who just play football so uh same group of guys dual players um and it was great it was it was very enjoyable season because you know you're you're with your club mm. and um i think it's great i think the split season is the only way forward and um yeah it was helter skelter but it always is it's it always is so we're we're punching against our weight here along with a very small parish really but we're we're uh we're tough nuts to crack your motor and through so um just on the split season as well actually you're you're all for it as as you just said there um do you think it's something that that could have been introduced a few years ago like did it need to come to 2020 for them to decide to to give it a change well it probably took the covid for the GA to do something you know if you think back of the history of the GA you know the whole history of the GA were very slow to change and mm. You know, like it was straight knockout up until you know early two thousands, and then we brought in the qualifiers. That was a big change. Uh, we opened up the doors of Crow Park to rugby and soccer. That was another big change. Aside from that, it's kind of stayed pretty much relatively the same league championship. Big gaps in the championship. Uh, I could never understand playing a championship game for me, and then having to wait another four weeks. No other sport did that. Crazy stuff. Um, so it probably took that time frame for the GA to go, right, we have to wedge this in here now. And that's what players want. Players want game after game, uh, week after week. The league is the most enjoyable part as a footballer because you're yeah. playing, recovering, playing. And um, it was the same this year in the championship. And I do think that the county should go first at the moment because I would have a fear that if the club went first, we'll say, for the first six months, that the county managers would still be pulling a lot of the the guys for training on the QT, they would still want them training, you know, going to the gym, doing runs, and the club might not get the full of them. So I think county to go first, definitely for the moment. 
Mm, absolutely and sure this player burnout and everything will come into that then if if that was to happen but it seems to be the way forward for sure the the county first and then and then the club um following on into that so just just looking at and i know i'm bouncing around from topic to topic here but um no problem but it's um uh, it's, it's bringing variety into things um just looking at different sports as well as as we we know you as a footballer and a hurler and sure isn't that enough says you but is there any other sports that you'd be you'd be interested in yeah soccer man as well or anything yeah i love all sports and um, probably the only two sports that i don't watch are golf and horse racing uh funnily enough i love rugby i love rugby league i'd be friendly with a lot of rugby league lads i love boxing um i was i was uh, quite a decent badminton player as a young fella growing up um, I would have represented Mead up until under 19s. I would have represented Leinster up to under 19s. Right, um, right. Badminton, badminton was my mother's uh, sport. Um, so after school, uh, yeah, I would have been. A, I would have been a. It's hard to boast, like, but I would have been a good badminton player now. But I didn't have yeah. the love for it. Uh, but yeah, I would have went up to, Dumb- uh, to Dublin and and different spots playing uh, up there, uh, in different tournaments and that. So. Um, Swimming, I was a great swimmer as a young fella. So, a um, couple of things that people wouldn't know, but I, I love rugby league and I love boxing. They would be two of my favourites outside. Um, I love rugby league. I'm a huge fan and follow it on Instagram and uh, a lot of the lads. And uh, I love my, my boxing as well, although some of the results can be. Uh, did a bit of it when I was young as well and, and, and still do a bit of it for training. But uh, some of the judging can be, can be uh, contentious at times in the boxing at the moment. I'm sure if there's any local charity boxing or white collar boxing going on, you probably get a phone call every time, do you? Anything, anything that's going on around the place? Yeah, I do, and I, I like I like it. I like a, I like a fight. Like I like I enjoy boxing. Uh, I like the skill of it as well, and not only just the. But yeah, no, I've I actually trained a couple of years ago. I was actually going to go into the All Irelands, and um, I had weighed in and everything. Um, I'd weighed in in twenty seventeen, done training for a few months, kept it on the QT. And um, it wasn't my fight on the same day as we were playing in a Bourne Cup game as Le- against Leash. Right, okay. So I pulled out. Yeah, I was fighting. I was going to fight in the heavyweight, um, he- heavyweight novice All Ireland. So okay. uh, which you would have to have less than ten fights um, at other level. So it's something that I might take up again. Um, so yeah, I had to. I said if there was ever going to be a clash, I was going. I'm a footballer, like so. I was going to go to the football, but I, I do enjoy boxing training. It's serious, serious sweat up. So mm. maybe, in, maybe in the future. Yeah, don't rule anything out. Anyways, for sure, as we said, if, if 2020 taught us anything, we can't rule anything out at all. Um, I was only looking at this article. I only looked at it again the other day. Um, it was something at the start of the podcast. When I started out the podcast first, I wanted to get. It started out as a GA based podcast on its own, and then got a few different soccer fellas in, and comedians, and singers, and and everything and anything and came onto the podcast from from one week to another. But there was an article on Balls.e, and they went through the, the the different characters in the GA and and different different styles, as in styles of appearance of different players and stuff like that. And and I, I came across those those pictures of of guys like the likes of yourself and the likes of Paul Gavin who, who have a lot of tattoos on, on the field and like you have a lot of tattoos on both your arms on your legs as well do you have do, do, would you be a person that your tattoo has to have some sort of a, a thing behind it or as your are your arms like a, like a canvas as some people say yeah um, uh, mo- most of my Ian, most of my tattoos are something to do with me or something that have happened to me most of them like 90, maybe 90% of them um you know, I've all different bits of bobs. You know, I have my portraits, my parents. Um, uh, I have coffee beans. I, I like coffee. I have you know quirky little things. I have cool quotes. I have my date of birth in Roman numerals. Um, along with where I'm from is called Ma Jarvi in Irish, which means plain of the oaks. So I've oak leaves on my arm. Um, Saint Michael. You actually forget about a lot of them because you don't. You know, you just kind of you don't realise that you have tattoos, but um. Uh, I suppose my sister and brother would have been out in New Zealand for a long time. They're a good bit older than me, and um, they would have been knocking around a lot of Maoris and would have been telling me that obviously, you know, like the Maoris have uh, tattoos and uh, their sleeves are stories of their life. So that's kind of okay. where. They, and I love the I love the All Blacks and I love the Maori and I love the, the the All Black Sevens rugby and I kind of started looking at them more and, and delving into it. And that's kind of when I started getting things that meant a lot to me. And that's kind of how the whole tattoo thing kicked off different quotes and that 
So you'd have little fillers then as well, a few butterflies and that that don't really people say why are you butterfly, but it just kind of can get into the position to kind of uh, fill it up more so a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, I'm into them. I like them. Um, I know they're not for everyone. My father used to always say, uh, "Convicts and sailors are the only boys with tattoos." So uh, he's not a ta- he's not a tattoo man at all, and neither was mum. But they they don't even bother asking anymore. I don't even know if they know us if I get a new one. Did did your dad start to like them a bit? You is it a portrait of your dad? Is it on your leg that you have it? Yeah, he used to like he'd, he'd come kind of creeping up behind you. He'd be he'd be you'd know he'd be looking at you. You know if he was getting the d- dinner being made or something, and you'd know he'd be looking at you from behind. He'd never come up and say show me that, but he'd. Uh, the real old school, like he'd be, he'd be, he'd be looking out of the corner of his eye at you. You'd know he'd be kind of staring. Yeah. So um, I'm sure they've, I'm definitely sure they've seen us, you know, on photos and walking around after a shower or something like. But no, they never, they never mentioned them anymore now. Yeah, can you remember which one would be your first one? I'm sure you remember. First one was just my mother and father's name, uh, yeah. right on the, the inside of my bicep, and then. Um, then I got a, a huge big one. I got, I got, it probably took 12 hours. I got St. Michael, the Archangel. Right. St. Michael is the, St. Michael is the man who said to have killed the devil in the, in the Bible. So, um, it's my name and I'm Roman Catholic and, um, I do a faith. Um, I, you know, I, I, I do a faith. I don't go to mass every week. I used to, but, uh, I would pray here and there. And, uh, I said, yeah, St. Michael, cool. Kill, kill, said to have killed the devil. Cool photo, a uh, cool picture. I said I'll go with that as my first big one, mm. and that's what I did. Can you can you put a number on them? Jesus, it's very hard to put a number <laughs> on them. Uh, like the easiest thing to say is full tie and full full arm, basically. Full right. tie and full arm, pretty pretty much covered. I have my fingers done. I have. Uh, I have my fingers done. I have my my hand almost done. I'll probably fill up that little bit there. Um. I don't think about people say, what about when you're 60 or when you're 70? People always ask that. I don't know why people always say that. Uh, mm-hmm. I could be dead in the morning, like, you know. Um, yeah, it's true. I, 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 you know, I, 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 I'm I, saying to myself, I want to be Arnie Schwarzenegger when I'm 70. Like, I want to be a machine. Like, so mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm my, I don't want to be a big chubby, heavy, heavy boy. You know what I mean? Like, I want to be, it's, it's actually a reason to try and half keep yourself in decent nick a little bit as well. It's you true. know? Yeah, yeah. So goals for the year coming, uh, Mickey. Twenty twenty one. We thought it might have brought something different from the, from the get go, but it's it's fairly similar so far to twenty twenty. If not, things are getting slightly worse. But should they always want to get worse before they get better as well? For yourself now, any goals for the year that you've set? Are you a man that's into his New Year's re- resolutions? Oh, uh, like I don't. Jesus, I would have wrote down goals and. Um, when I was younger, probably vague things to be, you know, to be the best I can be and all that type of thing. I just, just try and improve, try and improve as a person. I can be a bit impatient at times. Um, uh, you know, as a person that, you know, I can, I can get cranky here and there easily. You can, you know, flip off the handle at the odd time. Um, but from a sporting point of view, again, I, I, I feel once you just are able to look at yourself in the mirror and realize that, You've ticked all the little boxes along the way and given yourself the best chance you can be playing well to play well. That that's what I try and do. You know, my diet, my gym work, my running, my preparation for games, and I suppose that's the one thing about t- team sports, Ryan. You're lucky at inter county level that you probably have 20, 25, 30 guys all pulling in the one direction, but you want to be from a really elite club to, you know, have 20, 25 guys um, doing that uh, at club level. So, w- you know, once I kind of, I'm doing my little bit and like I said, I'm able to look at myself in the mirror and know, right, I gave it everything this year again. Um, yeah. It's probably my goals every year. I mm. keep it fairly simple. Mm. Uh, I have a few, I've, I have some quick fire questions that people sent in as well. Um, I think I did, yeah, I tagged you in that last night. Uh, on the Instagram story where people sent in their own questions and I have a few of them here for you and the first one actually okay. is one it's one that hasn't been asked um hasn't been posed to anybody in the podcast yet uh but it's a day in the life well someone asked what is a day in the life of Mickey Burke like um a day in the life like 
I, I've i openly said this before. I don't need to be up at 6 o'clock in the morning or 7 o'clock in the morning um, because I don't have that that job to get up that early. Now, I am getting, I am going to bed late, you know, so like if I'm going to bed at, you know, half one or two o'clock from closing the pub, like the earliest you'd normally get to bed is half one anyway, um, every night, if that's a Monday or a Tuesday or because there'll always be someone in for a drink. Um, get up in the morning, um, I might train in the morning. I do a lot of my trainings in the morning because I have that free time. Go and help me father. We've, like I said, a bit of a farm, farm, feed cattle, look at the sheep. Things like that. Uh, make sure my parents are okay. There could be deliveries in the pub. Um, could be deliveries, hurls, gloves, anything like that. I like my coffee. I'll go for a coffee, local coffee shop. Um, and then I'll open the bar at 6 o'clock. And, you know, that's kind of my my, my shift is late. So, um, and again, there's, there could be training there. So I'm blessed in that my sister Neve or m- my mother would open the bar for a couple of hours and I'd come home then and I'd be back home here for 10 o'clock and I'd take over in the bar then from 10 until, you know, whatever, one or, you know, that, that type of thing and close up. Yeah. So um, we've, we've, we've got a few sucklers here. Uh, sucklers and sheep, we probably have maybe 40 sucklers and a and, and, uh, good few sheep. So they, they take looking after. But as regards having to get up early, um, I'm, I'm lucky in that I don't. Like, I'm going to bed. At, if I'm going to bed at half one, I don't have to be up at six or seven, like, you know? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I'm um, just looking. I have the questions all written down here beside me. Um, these ones are more. That was that, that, that probably that probably wasn't a quick fire answer now, but it was hard to give a quick fire. Sorry. I know you can, you can't give a quick fire answer to that one. These ones will be more quick fire ones, but there's no set rules here. Anyways, we can stop and talk to them, talk about them if we want. First one is your favorite sporting venue. Now we haven't touched on sports much yet at all, but your favorite sporting venue to play in. Oh, yeah, sure. Like it'd have to be, it'd have to be Crow Park. I'd say it'd have to be Crow Park. I think, yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, we'll go Crow Park. Is there one standout memory from Crow Park, or one standout day that you you, you think back to? Um, like not in particular, but you you dream there is going as a young fella, mead man, going up to games, uh, going with your family, rallying up with all the all the families from Longwood having the sandwiches and the flask of tea and just dreaming, like dreaming of playing football there. And no one from Longwood had ever played football really for me. So it was as far fetched as they come Longwood. We were junior B and you just had that dream of, you, you loved football, you loved seeing me playing and jeez, would I ever get to run out there, you know? So I would say every young fella's dream is to get out and play in Crow Park. And I, I feel really lucky to have done that. You're right there. Your biggest sporting idol in terms of a, a sports person that you would have looked up to when you were younger, or even now? Um, locally, I would have had Darren Fay and Mark Riley because they were the closest mead footballers to me. Mark yeah. is from Summerhill and Dar- Darren is from Trim. Probably Kieran McGeaney, as a young lad, would have idolised Kieran for his commitment and his dedication and his longevity of his career. Um. Yeah, Richie McCaw maybe from the All Blacks as well for the amount of games he played and how well he played every game as well. Um, yeah, class act. Yeah, them, them, them types of guys. Like I like someone who trains hard, who who's rarely injured, who who dedicates himself to it, who constantly performs well and has a long career. I think anyone can have maybe one or two years. Mm. But if you have a good long career and shows that you're doing something right and the management obviously thinks something of you. Absolutely. So I would say Kieran McGinley or Richie McCaw. Spot on. Uh, in terms of your biggest sport and influence, then whether it be like a coach or a family member that you know was was with you from from day one or from your earlier your earlier days. Yeah, well, I'd say my father and Robert McGuire would be two of the local guys who started our underage teams um, okay. in the village here. In the village here, uh, looking after along with underage. Um, my secondary school in Trim. St. Michael's, it's now called Boyne Community School. A great teachers in there, Ray Tully and Jerry McGivney. Obviously, you might know these names, Una McCaffrey, um, Donica Garrity, great, great men in there. And Sean Boylan then gave me a chance at the seniors. So Bob O'Malley, actually, now that he comes into my head, Bob used to play cornerback with Mead on the 80s team in the 90s and would have got footballer of the year. And um, he, he was a selector and he actually re- really made me believe that I could become a, a good defender, like a, a solid inter-county defend, defender. 
So Bob O'Malley would be a huge inspiration to me. I, I've never told him that. I haven't seen him in a long time, but great man, a great man, Bob O'Malley. And was that from from a coaching point of view, or was it kind of putting the arm around you and saying that you're you're good enough? That sort of. Yeah, I think it was just bringing me up and kind of Bob was blunt and to the point and he was saying, can you do a job in this ladder? Can you, could you mark such and such? And I was like, yeah, I think I can do a job in them for you. No problem. And he says, you've got the ability to do this. You've got the ability to mark these guys. And like man marking isn't the sexiest job of all time. You know, you're not, mm. you're not going to get too much praise in a corner back. You're more likely to be, to be told you're absolutely useless or you're getting roasted. So um yeah there was a niche in the market there and i i kind of went for that that niche that man marking role because not everyone dreams of growing up being a man marker or corner back like you want to be scoring points and mm. running the show yeah when when you have someone like that like bob o'malley that that coaches you in that way is is, is coaching something you like to get into and and give some of that uh, some of that teaching that you were given to give that back into into the next generation of, of Meath footballers oh, I, I, down the line I'd like to think so Rian yeah I'd like to think I have a good a good football brain uh, we chat to Sean Tobin regularly about it and Tobes has recently left the inter-county setup himself he's a really good mate of mine and you'd be amazed the amount of people who don't have a great brain like as regards football like the best players don't always make the best coaches yeah. You know, like look at look at Jose Mourinho and Klopp and uh, Alex Ferguson. Um, there's so many examples. Arsene Wenger even like they didn't have fantastic careers because the be- I always find the best players don't have to think about the game. Like sure they don't. Man. It came so it it came so easy to them that they don't have to. It was so natural. Like I had to think about the game all the time. I had to because I wasn't unbelievably natural. I had I had a great work ethic and mental strength but to understand the game i had to think about it. whereas maybe you know the bet graham gerty's trevor giles has just went out and played and they were absolutely unbelievable they were class so it you know um it would be something that i would like to to uh, possibly do in the future yeah coaching and and try and try and help kids out bob was a cornerback as well and maybe he saw a bit of a rough diamond in, in me kind of and maybe he saw it was a similar to himself maybe a bit wild and um Maybe he took me under his wing, and you know that that type of thing. And mm. I'll always be thankful, thankful to him for it. Reen. Sounds good. Uh, the next one I have here for you: if you could change one rule in either football or hurling, or bring back a rule, or maybe rewrite a rule that's in at the moment. Jesus. Um, the forward mark at the moment, anyway, is is ridiculous. I think I don't like the forward mark at all. Um, I don't know why there's a forward mark. Uh, God, I'd have to think about that. I think that I think that at inter county level in hurling, possibly two referees need to be uh, one in each half of the field in, in inter county hurling because the ball can travel so far and so quick that the referees can't see it. Um, God, something will probably come, in, come into my head now tonight, and, and I'll say, Feck, I should have said that, but I uh, can't think of that off the top of my head now, Ryan. Yeah, just just from a defensive point of view as well, Mickey, that forward mark, and I know there is a defensive mark, but there's not as much emphasis put on that because you're making, if, if for a defender to get that mark, they have to make an interception rather than make a run for the ball. Like, does it does it make much sense at all to you, the forward mark? No, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, like, I, I think it's getting too much like Aussie rules. Um, whatever about a clean mark in the middle of the field, right grand. But I just, I don't understand that. It. Like it's, it's hard enough and it's not this, it's not anti forward because I'm a defender or anything like that. Um, I, it's sanitizing the game a little bit. And I, I, I just don't agree with it. I think it's, I think the defenders have a hard enough job to do as well. At times you're looking at the ball, you're looking at your man, you know, um, it's all to the forwards advantage. And, that's probably just it came into my head there a second ago. Um, I'm sure there'll be something else now that that would bug me. I'm delighted actually in Hurland that the yellow ball has been brought in. I think that's a, a brilliant idea and it should be across all codes because um, maybe maybe I'm coming on something now. Maybe I think that umpires and linesmen 
maybe not so much lines on, but I think umpires need more training actually. That's probably something because the amount of mistakes that they're making um in big games is 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 frightening. Now I do think that the yellow ball and hurling uh will 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 help, you know, because when it's flashing by the post, you'll be able to see the colour, but yeah, I can't. I can't fathom how some of the some of the decisions are made that some of the guys can't see it, that that's a forty five. That that's after going out off someone there. That's that's that team's forty five and the wave a wide ball. It's just bizarre. I think maybe the umpires need a bit more training. But mm. yeah, yeah. No, I'd have to agree with you there on that one. Uh, your proudest sporting moment. Second last. Uh, second third third last question for you. Um, just with. Winning probably medals with the club. Um, we came from junior B up to senior, so um, we won a junior B, we won a junior A. I was the captain and a Leinster junior A, um, an intermediate championship. Probably on an individual level, getting the supporters, meet supporters, footballer of the year twice, and and winning the the, the, the overall county footballer in twenty eighteen. Individually, that was that was very very special. You know, to be up with all the names of all the greats, like on the trophy, I, I couldn't believe I, I got it. So that was really, really nice. Um, but probably, probably winning the championships with the club was was brilliant. Mm. Um, the second last one here, and it's a bit different. Well, it's kind of still on the topic of sport. It's it's a question in relation to um, the video, and I only went back to have a look at it at around four o'clock today. The video. Um, I assume it was maybe the day after you won, maybe won the won the championships. You said, but you recreated the video from Only Fools and Horses, or you fought, you fell in across the bear. Was yeah, that, was that one of the days after a championship or something, or was that just an ordinary? That was the day after. That was the day after we won the intermediate. Yeah, in in downstairs. Yeah. Okay. Now, if anyone hasn't seen that video, I would recommend it as well <laughs> to, to <laughs> give it a look. But uh, yeah, if you could pick any three people to go into the pub on a day like that, you know, you're going in for the day, we're here for the day. If you can pick any three people, it could be any three in the world. It could be your three mates that to go into the pub with you anyways. If you could pick any three to go with you, who would it be? Oh, Jesus, lad. These are great questions. I need more time with this. I need more time with this. Feck it anyway. Um, I would have had a good think about this. Oh, Lord, I'm sure there'll be some serious characters that premiership footballers or something like that that you could have the crack with or rugby players. Um, God, I'll have to come back on that. I don't know. I don't know. Um, dead or alive, doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter, no. Oh, Jesus Christ almighty. Be some characters to pick. Uh, Vinnie Jones, maybe, from Wimbledon. You know, Vinnie Jones from Lockstock and Bar yeah. uh, or whatever. Uh, Snatch. Um, he could be one. Uh, Razor Ruddock, maybe, could be another. You know, big Razor. You're Paul Merson, like you're going on some rip here by the sounds of it. Uh, Paul Merson, something like that. Some of them stories, like I read a few of the Arsenal boys' books, and geez, it was mayhem what them boys were at. But um, yeah. like Paul McGrath, maybe or someone like you know, like I'd say it'd just be you wouldn't know what had happened, you wouldn't know where you'd end up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But sure, as we said, we'll get a second podcast in with the help of God when things settle down and, and we can actually go and, and meet people in that. And you'll, I'm sure you'll have a good thing between now and then. Of I will. I will. I'll have a better answer that. for you then. The last question for you now, and it's uh, there's a fellow that plagued me to uh, to get this question on and to ask every footballer and every hurler that comes on, your favourite pair of boots? Favourite pair of boots are the moulded Adidas Predators with the white on the bottom, I think they're Predator Manias, I'd say. Uh, yeah. Would it be from about 02 or 03? Yeah. Um, with the tongue. With the tongue, yeah. Yeah, with the tongue. But yeah, they're white. The white soles in the bottom and the and the, the, the studs are kind of red. Um, Jez, I've seen them on get going for sale and they're like hundreds of euro for them. So yeah. They, they, they would be my favourite all-time pair of boots. I think Kieran McDonald might used to wear them from Mayo years ago as well. And um, Yeah, I would say they would be my favourite pair of boots. I, I, I go with Adidas anyway. Yeah, very prob- very popular one. From the ones of Asso Fair, it's a very popular choice. Uh, Mickey, I think that wraps it up. As we said, we'd go... At some stage, we will get a second podcast in and we'll talk more on the sports side of things. But it's uh, it's been nice to get to know you on a more personal level and, and more about you off the field as well 
pleasure, lad. Thanks a million for asking me, and um, really enjoyed it. Uh, I wish I could have gave you a couple of better answers there now on the past and present. I've never been asked that before, which is great. Um, but I'll have a, I'll have a feckin' think about that now, and I know I'll come up with a couple of good lads later. But we'll do something again, and and uh, thanks again for asking me. Appreciate it. We will shortly. Thanks a million.